Steve, this is on one of our minnow tubes and one of our uh, fisheye dodgers. It's a nice fish. Now he wants to jump, and you'll notice I'm keeping this low rod angle. I don't want him jumping because uh, I don't want to lose him. This I want to put him in the smoker. So we'll see if we can get him within net range here. He's 40 feet back. I saw him flash back here. Looks like a nice fish. Feels like a nice fish. 20 feet. Taking it nice and easy. Oh yeah, nice king. Got that treble hook on there, so hopefully we got him pretty good. We'll see. Nice fish! <laughs> I could have got him quicker if my arms were longer. <laughs> oh, that's a nice king. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. I want to double down on what I had to say out at Lake Oroville the other day when I was fighting that big old landlocked king. Um, when I hooked that fish, he was 52 feet deep, and for a little while, he stayed down. He stayed down in the water column, all was well. I fought him with my rod in kind of a conventional position. But when I saw that line start to rise, I just know from experience that landlocked kings, they like to get acrobatic. I had a six inch blade on there, and I know when a fish starts jumping, bad things can happen. They can get slack, and they can throw the hook. They can land on the line, and they can get wrapped in it. And, uh, you know, my goal was, one, to land the fish. I was shooting video. And, two, I wanted to put that fish in the smoker. So I wanted to keep the fish from jumping. And what I did is I got the rod tip down. And it's important to note, you don't want to aim the rod tip at the fish. That takes all the cushion of the rod out of it. If you're going to get the rod tip down and encourage the fish to go down, you still want the rod loaded, arcing away from the boat against the weight of the fish. That's important. That downward press pressure encourages, can't even talk, um, that downward pressure encourages the fish to go back down and stay below the surface, which is what you want. That water acts as a cushion and helps to prevent the fish from getting slack. Now, another thing that I see people do, and uh, well, before I tell you what it is, I pride myself on being able to land fish, but more than that, I pride myself on being able to help other anglers, absolute novices, my wife, her friends, random people I see on charter boats, I pride myself in being able to help them land big fish. First thing you want to do when you've got a good fish on is stay calm, okay? That's number one. Number two, all this stuff you see with the TV anglers where they're doing all that and they're pumping on the fish recipe for disaster now once in a while you'll see me do that it's it's always a bad idea for a couple reasons one if you're lifting on that fish like that you're making that hole where the hook is embedded in the fish larger you make the hole larger there's a better chance of the fish spitting the hook number two Every time you lift and reel down, if you're not on the ball, when you drop the rod tip, if you're not on it with the reel, you're creating slack in the line. Create slack in the line, that's the time you're gonna lose a fish. So what do you wanna do when you got a fish on, whether it's a big fish or a small fish or whatever? First of all, you want your drag set properly. You don't want a super tight drag, but set your drag properly so if the fish runs, you can take out line. At that point, assuming the fish is down in the water and it's just a standard fight, get the rod butt into your body. I have big hands, so I can palm the reel. If you don't, you might want to get your hand on the grip. Whatever's comfortable, but I'll be palming the reel. I've got big hands. I can handle the reel. Elevate the rod tip. Keep the rod tip bent. Keep it loaded against the fish and turn the reel. Never stop. Turn the reel constantly, just like that. Lots of times when I'm shooting video, whether I'm with my wife or her friends or whatever, you'll hear me saying in the background, reel, reel, 
real. I'm just reiterating in their mind, I never want to see them stop. If the fish is running, I don't care. Keep reeling. Because you know what's going to happen? When the fish stops running, he's either going to stop in the water or he's going to rush the boat. And I want that reel going. I want any time there's an opportunity to retrieve line, I want line being retrieved. Now, more seasoned anglers, you know, you're going to glance up at, up at the rod tip and feel the rod and you're loaded against the fish and that's fine. A lot of times you'll see me in the kayak or even in the powerboat, I'll feel the fish. I know I've got tension on them. I've got forward momentum in the boat or in the kayak because I'm still paddling and I'll take my, my hand off the reel to get the net, to get in position to net the fish. The bottom line is the more you reel, the better chance you have of landing that fish. Keep the rod up at a 45 degree angle, keep tension, and you're gonna land a lot of fish, and you're gonna land a lot of big fish. Another thing, say you're by yourself. If you're with a partner, it's your partner's job to get the net. It's your partner's job to clear the other lines. But let's say you're by yourself. I fish alone a lot. You get a fish on. You think it's a good fish. Big fish just have a way of getting off. And a lot of times, you're gonna get one shot at a big fish when you get them near the boat. When the fish is near the boat, that's not the time to be getting the net ready. If you get into a fish and you think you've got a good fish, get the net. When the fish is still down in the water column, when the fish is still hot, he's likely gonna keep the tension on himself unless he runs at the boat. So check the rod tip, you got tension on the fish, get the net, get the net in position and then go ahead and fight the fish. Bring the fish up, watch the fish. When you can see the fish is, is coming your way and he's got his head up, reel down a little bit, a lift with the rod and grab that net and make the scoop. If the fish runs, cushion him down, drop the net and go right back to the reeling again. That's how you land big fish when you're by yourself. Keep your cool. Use your tackle, trust your tackle, trust the drag, trust that you've done your due diligence. You've got fresh line on. You're using tackle that's appropriate for the kind of fish you're trying to catch. Use the drag, use the reel, use the cushion of the rod, and you're gonna land a lot of big fish. Don't panic. And if you're fishing for trout or kings or something like that, and you really want to land the fish, and you see that line starting to rise, get that rod tip down. Get it down and work that reel and encourage that fish to stay under the water. Anyway, those are my tips for landing big old fish. If you haven't had the chance to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for some great trout tackle, striper gear, rods, reels, whatever, go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. And I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm signing off. I had some guy pumping propane down here. Some guy over there is blowing leaves or something anyway. Ah! Uh, I'll catch you next time right here, guys. You have a great day.